Welcome to FRC Media News for Thursday, November 15, 2018. I'm Keith Tebow. The recall effort that's looking to oust former Mayor Jaziel Correa from office has now gathered thousands of signatures necessary to hold a recall election. A ribbon-cutting ceremony took place today to honor the start of the new BMC Durfee High School construction project and the Middle Street drainage work in the city's south end will cause traffic delays for the next week. Let's check in with the news headlines of the week as we begin this week's show. We bring in Will Richmond, the digital news editor at the Herald News. Will, welcome back. Good to see you again. Same here. Let's get right to the top story. It's been our top story for about a month now. The uh, ongoing uh, issue with the potential recall of Mayor Jaziel Correa. Uh, this week, the group that has uh, formulated the recall effort, they've been out and about collecting signatures, and so far, they have been s very, very successful. We uh, had a chance this week to speak with the Election Commission Chairwoman, Kelly Souza Young, about the number of signatures that has been collected and what will happen next. Right now, there is approximately 4,800 raw signatures. Those are signatures that have not been certified yet. And how long will it take you to certify? Um, we're not we're not sure yet. I would I would assume three weeks to a month to certify. Right now, we have one clerk, one full-time clerk plus myself plus a part-time clerk, and we she's out sick. So we're having so we're down one person. So with the holidays and with the holidays and basically still trying to certify this election because I have until the day before Thanksgiving to certify the election. That, so that's, and that takes precedent right now. You're talking about the final election? Yes, the election for the site, for the state election, November 8, 6, 2018. Okay. Now, have people been calling you to take their names off the list? We've had a few to call us to take it off the list. Um, the process is once it gets filed with us, it does not get ta it cannot be taken off the list. I guess my suggestion would be, if you're if you don't want to be on the list, then not to sign it because once it hits us, we can't we can't do anything about it. <laughs> and that's per state law. Per state law, yes. When people sign anything that has to do with voting, even if it's the recall, how are they supposed to actually do that signature? Okay, the signature. They sign the petition, they make sure their address is marked, number and the street that they live on. We take and we certify it from that name and that particular address. If that number on the address is not there, let's say for example, South Main Street, but there's no number there, we cannot take that signature. We have to take it with a number. So some very interesting uh, items there from Kelly Susie Young. Um, uh, you know, over 4,000, almost 5,000 signatures now uh, being submitted to the uh, city clerk for a, a certification to begin the recall election. The uh, recallers need only 2,500, 2,510 uh, official signatures to uh, create that process. I would think with 4,800 uh, signatures, Will, that there's a good possibility that uh, 2,500 will be certified. Yeah, it would certainly seem that they're heading towards the, the right direction to get the required 2,510 signatures. Um, I understand that they are planning to wrap up the signature drive today, uh, you know, on Thursday and turn in their final batch on Friday. Uh, the deadline officially would be Saturday. There was question that that would, might push it then to Monday for them to file, but it seems that uh, they're going to stop today and file any signatures that they have by uh, the end of the day tomorrow. Yeah, because there has been uh, a question concerning when they would be able to file. Originally, I believe it was supposed to be Monday, but apparently they're, they're not uh, taking any chances. They're going to file by the end of the day tomorrow to make sure they get all their signatures in. Yeah, it would certainly seem to eliminate any potential challenge of the idea that signatures that were filed after uh, the, 19, the deadline on Saturday. So, you know, get that avoid that challenge they seem to feel pretty comfortable with the total number of signatures that they've gotten to this point and think that that will be enough to carry them over the uh, the top here you know kelly uh, susie young was uh, discussing the fact that um, her office is still working on finalizing and, and certifying the results of the state election that was held uh, last week which is a priority and i believe that uh, joe good uh, at the herald has done some reporting that 
you know, these uh, recall signatures may not be certified until later in December, around Christmas time. Yeah, certainly even in that clip there, she mentioned about three weeks to a month. Mm -hmm. uh, it certainly sounds, you know, staffing issues and, uh, and the need to finalize this election. So it would certainly, uh, you know, it would seem that that's going to take some time. Uh, not sure, you know, how that will affect then the process of getting it to the city council, n not fully uh, recalling what their schedule looks like for December meetings. But yeah, so it certainly would seem at this point we wouldn't expect any sort of election if it were to reach that point until, um, you know, February at the earliest. She also mentioned, uh, Kelly, Susie Young did, that uh, she had gotten some calls about people who no longer wanted to be on the, uh, on the petition list. And, and she uh, did a good job in explaining to our Don Amata that once you're on the list and they're submitted, that um, those can't be tampered with. That would, that would be a, an issue. Um, have you heard or any of your reporters heard that, that people may have signed it and then had some second thoughts? I've seen some claims on social media that, yeah. uh, you know, the those seeking the signatures were not telling people what they were signing. Of course, this is a two-way street here. If you're going to be putting your signature on anything, uh, at least certainly in my case, I would want to know what it is I'm signing before I signed it. I uh, wouldn't really just kind of sign my own my name on anything. So, uh, you know, it's a two-way street here. And like she said, once you've signed it, you've signed it. We can't remove it. Uh, the per state law and, uh, and you know you can understand why that's part of the process. Have you had any opportunity to speak with uh, either the mayor or, or any of his uh, legal team in terms of how they plan to handle any challenges to any of these signatures? Uh, no word on any of that yet. Uh, you know the mayor has certainly told his supporters to not sign it mm -hmm. uh, so we would certainly expect that he would look to challenge the some of these in some way uh, as well you know it certainly would benefit him to not get this to the point of a recall election. So I would expect that to, uh, to certainly move forward as the certification process is completed. All right. We'll have definitely more information as the uh, recall petitions continue to be filed at Government Center. And we'll have a, a better indication very soon in terms of what those final raw numbers are of signatures and whether they have the 2,510 to uh, move forward with the recall. All right, well, else, uh, elsewhere this week, um, we've been uh, talking about it quite often here on our show, the closure of St. Anne's Parish. Um, we'll have a story a little bit later on about the final mass that's coming up uh, next weekend, a week af weekend after next. But uh, a group looking to uh, save the church uh, held a meeting last night to find out ways in which that uh, the structure, at least, can be saved. Do you have any update on that? Yes, yeah, so certainly this group, uh, mainly of uh, residents of Fall River, has uh, uh, obtained uh, an attorney who is familiar with saving churches. He's pr saved about a dozen around the country, uh, and they're going to, you know, continue their effort to save the, the structure. Uh, as of this point, they have filed a uh, an objection to the decree to close the church. Uh, they aren't sure if that's going to be successful, and certainly they have their doubts about uh, the success of that. But as well, um, they're looking at a way to save the church as not as a parish, but as a church. This would then have a group, a private group, sort of maintain the uh, maintain the structure. They'd look to keep the the bottom basement open where the shrine is for private prayer. Uh, you wouldn't have regular masses at the church anymore, but it would be something that you know they could save the structure, keep it up as a you know an icon in the city and see what they can do to, uh, you know, continue to repair it while the building is open in a sort of limited status. Mm. All right, very good. Again, another another issue we'll be following. All right, Will, what's coming up over the next few days? Uh, well, this coming weekend, uh, you know, we're fortunate to have um, one of our high school teams playing for a state championship. Mm -hmm. uh, the girls and boys over at Somerset Berkeley's field hockey team will be uh, playing for the state championship on Saturday, so we'll have full coverage of that as well as an interesting story about a uh, resident up at the Catholic Memorial Home in Fall River who had been airlifted out of Vietnam, and she tells us a little bit about her story uh, you know, back when that happened during uh, wartime. All right, Will. Thanks a lot. We'll talk again soon. Take care. All right. Have a good weekend, Keith. We'll have more FRC Media News right after this. Here are some job descriptions on the latest hot jobs list from the Mass Hire Fall River Career Center. 
Respiratory therapist, Lynn Care Incorporated, located at 221 Weaver Street, is looking for a full-time respiratory therapist responsible for setting up highly technical equipment and provide patient education for the patient's needs. Job number 1140521. Commercial Truck Driver, Republic Services, located at 1080 Airport Road, is seeking a full-time commercial truck driver, responsible for safely operating a front, side, or rear loading truck, and providing complete waste removal services for customers who reside on a designated route. Job number 11404832. Meter Service Technician. New England Gas Company, located at 36 Fifth Street, is in need of a full-time meter service technician, responsible for performing necessary work to maintain gas service to customers in a safe and efficient manner. Job number 11400006. Rite Aid, located at 933 Pleasant Street, is looking to fulfill the following full and part-time positions. Pharmacy Technician, job number 11405496. Shift Supervisor, job number 11405500. The Fall River Public School Department, located at 417 Rock Street, is looking to fulfill the following full-time positions. Fourth, fifth grade ESL teacher, job number 11397335. Third grade elementary teacher, job number 11397313. For more information on these or other positions, visit masshirejobquest.detma.org or call the Mass Hire Fall River Career Center at 508-730-5000. Welcome back. A ribbon cutting ceremony was held today at BMC Durfee High School on Ellsbury Street to commemorate the official start of construction of the new school. Today is a great day in this amazing city. Today we honor and recognize the hard work of, of really generation of people uh, who put together the goodwill and effort to be able to afford the current students and the future generations of this amazing city, an opportunity to attend a truly amazing 21st century high school. We went to the voters. We asked the voters to approve and to affirm uh, this action of building this new school. We asked the voters for approximately $98 million uh, on their tax bill separately uh, to pay for the school. And when you're, when you're in that process, when you're asking the voters to do something like that, to pay an additional tax for something that they may not even utilize, um, that's, that's a pretty big ask. And we went to the voters, and I am happy to report, and everybody knows that. That's why we're standing here today. The voters overwhelmingly supported the construction of a new Durfee High School. So those watching at home, the citizens of Fall River, the voters of Fall River, everyone here really thanks you for making this a reality. As a proud Hilltopper, I am genuinely excited to see this come alive. And I want to just say that this community deserves a new school. And to see that this dream is coming true and becoming a reality, even in my senior years, it's just a great accomplishment for me. And being a student representative and an advocate for the students who are seeing this new school come alive is generally such heartwarming to me because even through my four years here, it's been such a great experience. And to see that the new generation of students are coming in and learning a new and improved environment is so heartwarming. Fall River residents can expect some traffic delays in the south end of the city until November 23rd, as we hear in this report. The intersection of Middle Street and South Main will be closed for a period of time. Uh, we're doing the construction work for the Middle Street drainage project. This is a section of the drainage project that heads south on South Main Street uh, from Middle Street. So that intersection of Middle Street and South Main Street will be closed for a period of time while they get out of that intersection and start heading south on South Main Street. Uh, once that intersection is opened back up, there will be southbound only traffic on South Main Street uh, from Middle Street all the way down to Osborne. Northbound traffic will be detoured up Osborne to Second Street and then back down to Middle. How long is this going to last? Uh, so the closure of the actual intersection and the work in the intersection should be about a week to two week period. Uh, the additional work heading down South Main Street is probably going to be till 
uh, about the Christmas time, December 20th or so. So motorists can expect detours? Yes, motorists will, can expect detours. As, we, as you know, this has been an ongoing construction project in the whole entire Middle Street corridor. Uh, there has been detours throughout that area. Uh, the hospital and the local businesses are still open for business in that area. We're trying to accommodate to make sure that traffic flow can get into those businesses and also the local area. But uh, it is a large construction project and we appreciate everybody cooperating with the detours in that area. Fall River's Emergency Management Agency Director Richard Aguiar will soon get a new vehicle, thanks in part to a grant acquisition. Here's more. Each year, the EMA produces a grant for directors, uh, as referred to as the EMPG grant, and we have to apply for the grant. We have to write why we want the grant, and each year the grant is specifically for different items. Um, this year the grant is for $20,460. And with that grant, I am purchasing a, a new vehicle with help from the city uh, for my, the use of myself um, and all the equipment that we have uh, for, special, for special services, emergency management, um, comes from the EMPG grants. Uh, since I've been director since 2004, I have received approximately $226,000 in grant money. So this is all money that the city does not have to um, spend on emergency management. It's all money that we apply for and we get the grants and we buy all the equipment that we need through that grant money. As we mentioned earlier in the show, next weekend, a final mass will be held at St. Anne's Church in Fall River. FRC Media News spoke with a diocesan spokesman to get more details. Bishop de Cunha has asked the parish uh, administrator, Father David Destin, to work with a committee of parishioners to plan that mass. So it's, it reflects their interests and their wants for what will be a sad day, obviously, for all of them. It's a grand history, there's no doubt about it. The parish has been there, I think, since 1869. The building was dedicated in 1906. Um, it's a landmark, it's an icon, and hopefully it will remain um, there, uh, perhaps in service in another way to the people of Fall River. We'll have more FRC Media News after this. Welcome to Hot Dogs and Cool Cats. Today we have Miss Wiggles Fuzzy Bottom. Uh, she's a five-year-old chihuahua. Um, she gets along with other dogs and she does do, do good with kids. Um, she, came as a, she came in as a stray. She's very, very sweet and she is lovable. Loves to give kisses and she is content being held in your arms. And she does like to go for walks as well. I feel like she gets along with everybody. Um, so if you want to come down and meet her, um, we're we uh, located at 300 Linwood Street, uh, Fall River, Mass. So come on down and meet Miss Wiggles Fuzzy Bottom. Today we have Bangle. Uh, Bangle here is he's just under a year old. He's a very nice kitty, as you can tell, likes to be held. Uh, also, he, he's very calm, especially given his age. Uh, Bronson is, however, a special case. Uh, he has a very small bladder, interestingly enough. We've been giving him a special food, which uh, may not be necessary in the home, you know, once he, once he gets there. But we're doing it because uh, he's under enough stress here in the shelter. He, we can kind of ease his uh, ease his passage but as you can tell he's a very nice cat very much likes to be held likes the attention very sweet so we're hoping we can find somebody uh, who themselves is very sweet and uh, and give uh, can give him a chance uh, in their home and I'm sure he would love to uh, I'm sure he would love to spend some time with you maybe move in a little bit <laughs> all right so if you'd like to come and meet Bangle here come on down to 300 Linwood Street in Fall River Massachusetts it's Forever Paws Animal Shelter. Finally this week, if you're looking for some family fun this weekend, here's an event the Fall River Public Library is offering on Saturday. Now, if you're wondering why I am holding a genie, it is because this coming Saturday, November 17th at 1 o'clock at the PAL Auditorium across the street from the library, we are having the show Aladdin and His Magic Lamp, presented by the fabulous 
Gerwick Puppets. If you have never seen the Gerwick Puppets, do not miss it, this event. They are incredible. Handmade puppets, handmade scenery, and uh, telling the fantastic story of Aladdin and his magic lamp. Children are welcome to come dressed as their favorite fairy tale characters to this event and enjoy the uh, festivities of Fairy Tale Week. We haven't had the Gerwick puppets here in over well over 10 years. They're kind of up there in, uh, in price. They're award-winning puppeteers, very much sought after, and they've been a little bit out of our price range. So that's why we're delighted that the uh, Fall River Women's Union is uh, sponsoring this, this great event. And what is the grand prize? The grand prize this week, all week long throughout Fairy Tale Week, whenever children come to the library, children 12 and younger can register to win this wonderful fairy tale basket. It has unicorn puppets in it, it's got a unicorn headpiece, there are fairy wings, there's swords, there's shields, and there's wonderful fairy tale uh, storybooks incorporated into the basket. So drop by, register to win this wonderful basket. The winner will be announced right after the show this coming Saturday uh, after the Gerwick Puppets performance. That'll do it for this edition of FRC Media News. You can watch FRC Media News Thursdays and Friday at 6 p.m. and you can get more news online at our website, frcmedianews.org. For all of us here at FRC Media News, I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great week and we'll see you next Thursday.